You are not a wonder. You are not a unicorn. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, it is common to man. It's Maintenance Monday. Hello, citizens, and welcome back to Maintenance Monday. I'm glad to be here. I hope that you're glad to be here. And we are still in the same series we've been in that we've been calling Face Off. We've been calling it Face Off. I just want to thank you guys for trusting me for us all to look in the Word of God and use it as a mirror. So thank you for trusting me to see the word of, or see ourselves in the word like a mirror. We're still in the Face Off series, right? And today we're doing something um, that is popular. Again, remember in this series, we're taking popular ideas, popular quotes, um, anything like that, any of those popular things that we've embraced and maybe inadvertently taught as scripture or at least as godly or biblical and we are trying those things against the scripture basically we are comparing them against the scripture making sure that yes it is scripture or yes it is supported by scripture and today we are facing the lord won't put more on you than you can bear have you ever heard that the lord won't put more on you than you can bear and i don't mean have you ever heard that have you ever heard that quoted oftentimes this one is quoted like it's actually being quoted as a scripture the lord won't put more on you then you can bear. So I don't know if you've heard it, but I've certainly heard it. And most of the times, this is what people think that this particular uh, quote means. So you see this guy, right? I want you to I want you to see it as God first throwing one rock on him. So that's how it looks at first, right? People think that the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. It's like you're carrying something and God has strategically calculated exactly how much you can carry. And so then the Lord just starts laying it on you, right? He's just laying it on you. And as he's laying it on you, it's almost like God has measured it. Don't you worry, no matter how tall it gets, no matter how much you, how much weight it is, no matter how many rocks go on your back, the Lord won't put more on, the, on you than you can bear. Why? Because he's calculated it. So yes, I know you're sweating. I know it's, I know it's a lot. He won't put more on you than you can bear. Most of the times, it's about any suffering that you're going through, any pain that you're experiencing. God has not only put it on you, but before he put it on you, he already measured it out and he knows what you can take. So don't worry. He's got it. He's got you. Right? So in a way, it just seems like God is just stacking weight on us, but we can trust that he won't put more on us than we can bear. That's the way I've always heard it. Is that the way you've always heard it? The Lord won't put more on you than you can bear? That's the way I've always heard it. And the truth of the matter is, there's nothing wrong with that, right? It's comforting to know that everything I'm carrying, the Lord calculated my abilities, and I know for sure I can carry it. So just keep on keeping on because God has got us. No matter what's stacking up against me or on top of me, God already knows what I can take, and he's putting it on me to show me how much I can bear. At least that's how we've heard it. Most of the time, much like all have sinned, this is quoted as a scripture. Unlike all have sinned, this is not actually a scripture quoted. So before I move forward, I want you to know that there are many things that have been quoted as if and most believe are scripture, but they aren't scripture. We quote it like a scripture because it's become popular and we say it a lot, but it's not actually scripture. So this one isn't scripture, but is the perceived quote even right? Even the way we see that scripture, is it, is it right? I remember over a decade ago, this particular passage is one that really had me going. And I had to figure out what, what does it mean and where do they get it from? And what you will find, and I will share with you today, is that you're not actually going to find this in scripture. Not in the King James, not in the New King James. Now, I'm not going to say you're not going to find it at all because there's so many different versions they may have stuck it in there. But like if you're looking for the King James or the New King James, you're not actually going to find this verbatim quote, the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. What you will find is the scripture it comes from. Let me show you that. The scripture it comes from is 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able 
but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So again, even if we did say, okay, here's where they get it from, right? It's not a direct quote, but here's where they get it from. But is this passage talking about the Lord putting weight on you or even when it's time to carry weight? Is this passage talking about God being a, making sure that you're able to carry the weight that's on your back? Is that what this passage is talking about? Well, we're going to find out. So who's facing off today? In this corner, coming in strong, we've got escape. We've got escape. And in this corner, we've got carry. All right? So either we're going to escape something or we're going to carry it. Right? We're either, one more time, going to escape something or we're going to carry it. So let's look at the scripture again. And it says, there have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, okay, who will not suffer you to be tempted. He will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, right? You can handle it. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. So now that you know the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear I'm telling you, here's where they get it from. It's not a direct quote from a script as a scripture, but this is the scripture they get it from. Can you see where they're getting it from? There are two places that you can see where they're getting it from. The first one is right here. Above that ye are able. Above that ye are able. The Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. Above that ye are able. Look again. God who is faithful will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able. Right. And then here's another one that they you can see where they got it from, that ye may be able to bear it. The Lord won't put more on you than you can bear that ye may be able to bear it. So I can see where they're getting it from. But is it properly applied? Is it properly ap applied? Um, so we're going to keep this real, real simple. I'm not going to take us a bunch of places. I'm going to keep us keep it real simple. Let's go to the top. And we're going to go to verse 6. At this particular passage is basically Paul begins to talk about our fathers before, those in Israel, those before us. And this is what he begins to say. Now these things were our examples. These were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted. Remember, we're talking about what our fathers did, those before us. So they were our examples that we should not lust like they did. Watch this. Neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them. Are you seeing a pattern here? As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Okay, then verse 8 says, Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. So now once again, we keep seeing that these were our examples. Let's not do what they did. They were idolaters. Don't be like them, right? Don't fornicate like they did. Watch this. Neither, we're still on that, neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed as serpents. Neither, verse 10, murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Are you beginning to see, let's look at 11. Are you beginning to see that this is talking about what happened before and don't mimic, don't do what they did before. Now 11 says, now all these things happen unto them for examples. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be short and sweet today. All this happened for examples and they are written for our admonition. It's written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth Take heed lest he fall. So we see this scripture. We've been seeing it. The Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. The way we're used to hearing it is that there's weight on us and the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear. But if you go above in this passage, you begin to see that this is actually talking about, hey, there are some temptations and your fathers, those before you went through them. And I want you to go through them too, but don't fall for them like they did. Not that I got a bunch of weight and suffering that I'm going to make sure you're able to carry. Watch this. Don't let the temptation take you out the way it did those before you. There have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. You are not a wonder. You are not a unicorn. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, it is common to man. We've seen God seen it before. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to be 
tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. There is an escape. Not that you can carry the weight, you can get out. You can get out. Okay? So this is not about, again, God putting weights on us, but perfectly calculating what we can carry. This is about us seeing and noting those things before us and those that those those people, what they did before us, the moral failures, the, the idolatry, we don't have to do them, right? We don't have to do them. This one or this situation is definitely not a unicorn. It's not about a weight. We already know the Lord's yoke is easy and his burden is light. It's about and escape, not what you can carry, how you can get out, right? How you can be free. So I want you to see again, it's not about what you, how you respond to what you're carrying, but it's about how you respond to what you're facing. So let's look at this. It says, when we are faced with things designed to, so this is the moment, right? They've been quoting this, this passage in a way that makes you think it's about what you can carry. When I want you to consider, it's about what you're facing. So when we're facing things that are designed to, one, justify our decision to choose something over God, right? When you're faced with something that's designed to justify your decision, when you pick something over God, two, separate us from the love of God, right? Three, reject God. So you may be tempted to to pick something over God, right? And it may be justified in most cases. Um, something that will separate us from the love of God, something that will reject God. It's not about what God, how God has calculated it for you to carry. Instead, whether it's the decision to choose something over God, whether it's separate us from God, reject God, you don't have to do any of these things because God has created an escape for you. When you are faced with the very thing that some people would say, you know what, it makes sense that you would reject God for that. I understand why you made that decision to choose that over God. I get it. God has created a plan to get you out, to keep you from it. So when you hear the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear, I want you to understand that scripturally, what that really is talking about is there is nothing that has come upon you. You're not a unicorn. You're not a wonder. And neither am I. Right? There's nothing that we have that we're facing that God's plan of escape hasn't already proven to be victorious over. The, you're not the first person to deal with what you're dealing with. God's seen it before, and He's given us a way out. He's given us a way out. So I want to make sure that we face that. Right? That it's not about a weight. God has already proven that He has a plan of escape. That's not, not only going to get you out, but it's going to keep us right, right? Follow the roles that he leads us to and will be testimonies and witnesses that the devil is defeated and God is victorious. We are the workmanship of Christ, which means I show off God's ability to make a son of God in the earth. I am his trophy. We are the trophy of God. We show the world what he's able to do. We're his workmanship. So let's do it and let's please, please him with that. So I challenge you today to trust that nothing you are facing or going through can outsmart the plan of God to keep us. Nothing we are facing or going through can outsmart the plan of God to keep us. He's God. I'm not a unicorn. My situation is not a unicorn. Neither, neither are you. And neither are your situations a unicorn. Trust the Lord. He's done it before. He'll do it again. What you ask, what has he done before? He's kept others. And he can keep us. Right? I love you. Remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to leave your impression. And the next time you hear the Lord won't put more on you than you can bear, know that it's, he has made sure that you can spend eternity with him no matter what you're facing. He's giving you what you need to say no to what you need to say no to. Yes to what you need to say yes to. And the escape route to get out. I love you guys. Next week on Maintenance Monday. We could probably be safe. We could definitely be saved and protected from snares and traps that have been set. But he was surprised. Well, none my Lord, O King, but Elisha. Okay, so they, they snitch around these parts. But it's them. Now watch this.